I don't like doing this, but I'll do it. God doesn't say anything, doesn't even blink. Margaret covers her mouth with her hand muffling some sort of gas. Lily smiles I always count on you, Pika. I don't know exactly what kind of love it is you share, but there has to be a bond in that group of yours. Mm. Almost dying. Slowly. It doesn't matter. I can still try for the other shore. Go. Or he just, it's uh, searching. You're searching for something, and that's how he came out here. No, it wasn't a joke. Well, there is a point to it all. It's like searching for yourself. Then his voice, uh, uh, already by nature, by nature light and airy, drops to a whisper. I grab Blue's arm without thinking he's standing there stiff, starting uh, staring at the glow eyes dull. To hell with the God's order. If we don't go now, we will never go anywhere again. Lou doesn't respond. I give him, I give his arm a tug, and he appears to come himself uh, when he nods. I make a decision then that I, that I won't let go of his arm. I don't know what will happen to him if I do. We take off the heat growing with each step. The dankness, the dankness of the bridge means the fire is spreading slowly. But it me makes makes me question how it began in the first place. There is no end to how wrong this place is. It takes 20 paces before the air around us ripples, then starts holding, uh, folding into itself. Thick smoke pours over us, stinging like scorpions at my eyes. I cover my mouth with my free arm to keep breathing, and soon we're at the fire itself. The bridge lurch beneath us as if it beams uh, supporting if, uh, it. Supporting it are starting to give away to the thousands of flying sparks. Lou stumbles and pulls against me for support, but we keep our ground. I start pulling him through the blaze. We don't have time to gather bearings. Who knows how long we have until the bridge collapses or is devoured by flames. As we push through the smoke, Lou wheezes from breath uh, from breath beside me. Figures emerge, Vermilion Margaret. I look at the two in the situation around them, baffled. None of the individual pieces make any sense. Until the reality of it hits me all at once. The guide is gone. Margaret paused at the bridge. Her lantern is at her side. It's her glasses. She's missing, but Millie is off to, off to the other side, lanternless, with only flickering embers in the wind to keep him out of the, dark, the darkness. I want to pretend that they're both fine, that they'll be capable of handling themselves, but I know that's just wishful thinking. Both of them are in danger. I don't know how the Nixie feel about fire, how daring they'll be to, with it uh, so close by, but I can't assume that this is an opportunity that they would want to miss. I have to do something, and I have to do it now. God damn it! This is this is the this will kill one of them. Without wasting another second, I run to Margaret's side, Lou in tow, and I'm the one who put her in danger. She needs me. I have to be perfect. Margaret's head shoots up, eyes squinting through the smoke, tears like a ribbon gleam down her face. What happened to you? Oh yeah, the guy the guy took off. Wait. Oh yeah, she lost her glasses last time too. And oh, I was the one who pulled her pulled her last time. Uh, and since Bamili was like, fuck that. And basically didn't even help. Oh. I forgot about her losing her glasses too. Oh my god, I forgot so much about this game. Oh, uh, these okay. Analytically speaking, I need to like sit down and do all this and then try to remember all the goddamn questions. All the goddamn Things you got. Marcus says she's a bit of that. I don't know. I'm nearly at, the, at her side when uh, when a shot goes up from the other end of the bridge. A chunk of the bridge near Billy has vanished, collapsing into the water, and its place are Nixie trying to crawl their way up. Billy's back, backing away from them, but that's only pushing him closer to the other bridge. I check on Margaret again. She's on her feet, heading over to me, but she's standing now, and she has a lantern to keep those monsters at bay. I leave her running to get my light to Millie. Millie stopped in the perfect center of the bridge, unable to move, unable now to move forward or back. Instead, he turns to me, face painted in a way I've never seen from him. All he can do is wait for me to come and hope it's soon enough. But as I approach, so does the Nyx. Nyx, a Nyx larger than I knew they could be. It pulls itself halfway out of the water, reaching for for Millie. And it grabs him and latches his arm around his torso, but Millie lets out an agonized scream, the next claws anchoring into his flesh, and the creature lets itself fall into the lake. 
Using his body weight to take Vermilion with it. I run faster, reaching my arm, my lantern out to it, out to them. Vermilion doesn't reach back. He just looks at me. Don't. He falls back into the lid. Nix is way too much for him to resist. After a moment, the water stills just inside of him. I stopped panting, still feet away from Vermilion. Fell. Tears burn my eyes. He can't be gone. Tell me, tells my arm. I panic. It's Margaret. I gave her her. I can barely keep myself together. What happened to the guide? Is he also? My voice cracks in spite of myself. I don't know what I want to hear, but it has to be said. No, I don't think so. I couldn't see through the smoke and without my glasses, but I didn't hear anything. He wouldn't be the one to die without making noise. You know what that. Did this happen? While we were running through the fire, the bridge shook. It knocked my glasses off. I bent down to pick them up. There were footsteps. Someone kept going, and <laughs> then Bamele asked if I was all right. Okay, so at least he asked. Tears returned to her. She wrapped her nose on her sleeve. He said he'd stay to keep watch while I couldn't see. That sounds like Bamele. And then he took off I'm running. I'm so sorry. I don't say anything in response. I can't. The bridge trembles again, and I gather my wits just enough to get we through need this. To leave. Which way did the guide go? It sounded like he just went forward, and then I couldn't hear him anymore. That will work. Lou? I look around for him, realizing he's not with me any longer. At some point, I let go of his arm. He's standing to the side, gaze glazed, transfixed it on the dark on the darkness. He seems completely unaware of everything that's happened. The fire, the exceed the death. I step forward and yank him back to what my are side. You doing? He flinches at the unexpected contact and looks intently at me, but he doesn't offer an expla I'm explanation. I'm sorry. Both of you stay close. We are not going to separate again. We keep down the path, the flames still gradually gnawing on the planks behind us. The guy doesn't turn up, nor do any signs of him, but we push on. We will not stop moving. Then we do. The bridge comes to a dead end and rotting and collapses into the lake. For a moment, our breath stops at once. If this was the way that leads to the island, then I flip back to the face of my others, my, my expression unaffected. I'm not going to allow panic to see. Let's look for another bridge. I result beginning retractor. The others follow without protest. Our regression is silent, except for our footfalls and the snapping of soggy wood attempting to burn. We frequently have to step over smoldering sections trying to come alight. At one point, we have to walk one at a time, some sideways, to avoid a flickering, a widely flickering small fire billowing out black smoke. Just as my spirit is is about to begin uh, dim, we come across different directions to take. Along all the forks, there are only two that aren't collapsed or too consumed by fire to risk the fall of them. Voices scare, uh, are scarcely more than more than a whisper. I barely make it out over the sound of crackling flames and splintering woods. Lou's gaze is fl flickering down either path. There's this palpable sense of anxiety coming from I, him. I don't know. I don't know which way. It's all right. But it's not all right. We have, so we have to something to go off of. Anything at all. A cold sweat trickles down my back. Before anyone tries to uh, randomly choose, a noise catches my attention. I hastily address the Did two. you hear that? It sounded like a whistle. It came from the right. Lua and I trade looks. This could be a signal, but we need. But what if it Do isn't? Those monsters know how to whistle. I would assume not, but oh. we should go right. I think to where the sound came from. I'm a little surprised Lou is offering his own opinion. It is good to hear. However, I take a I deep agree. breath. Da, da, da. Of course, the side we move is the right path. No longer hesitating. As we follow the bridge down, there is no no sign of the end. There is no need to debate between directions again. We start to outpace the fire, one danger, one danger, yeah, one danger thankfully fading away, but the night continues to lighten regardless. I glance at the sky, realize what's happening, the sun is rising, the bridges will sink into the water as the darkness disappears and takes us with them. We'll be lost. It suddenly seems pointless, we don't even know where we're gone right away. Can't outswim the Nixie and we can't out, outrun the dawn. Or we're, or we're going to run out of time, yet we keep moving forward. And finally, and finally, our perseverance is reward. The silhouette of an island rises in the distance. The island grows rapidly larger and soon sends the earth and trees reach us. In spite of all the horrors of the night, a dock emerges from the fog before us, welcoming us to safety. We reach the shore. I don't believe it until I've stepped off the wood and my boot sinks into the sand. I walk further inland like a corpse, my sole instinct to flee from the waterline. My hazy eyes single on one some, on something ahead. The guide stands on an outcrop on outcropping in the distance, watching like a sentinel. He doesn't even come to greet us. 
I stare at him for a moment, not even able to feel alarmed at my own lack of feelings about his situation. He uses his staff to gesture to the forest behind him before disappearing between the trees. I can only assume he must be asking me to follow. The guy takes me further inland, more towards the center. There's a view of the coastline from here, but we're also por uh, partially obscured by it's a few trees. To sleep. No one has the energy to argue with him at the moment. I found a place. Yeah, this is where Bamili is like almost where he he would still argue. Sadly, I found a place as comfortable as the one could ask for a location next. Uh, for once, exhaustion is my ally, and I slip into his sleep. My eyes slowly blink, uh, blink upon every job. Okay, now we're in the middle again. Now this is gonna be too different because uh, last time we have a Milly here, but Milly got an argument with the guide and the guide was an option to talk to. He's probably still an option because he just sort of left us and we're probably mad at him for that. But everything else, I don't know. And that's just, ah, my God. Oh, uh, I don't want to lose my Milly that early. Oh my God, if anything, I want to keep um the three amigos. There has to be a way for that, right? I'm pretty sure there's a way. The ground is hard and rocky, but that isn't the only reason I am eager to get on my feet. I wonder if there's a way that you uh, that the god dies and everybody else makes it somehow. I check my surroundings. The harsh, craggy, uh, craggy earth from the island is interlaced with twisting vines and gnarled, gnarled branches. Beside me, Margaret and Lou are still fast asleep. The god over is nowhere to be seen. I realize that I don't really call. Alright, this is the normal stuff. Margaret accidentally knocks Lou as she gets up, awakening him as well. My mouth, my mouth opens and shuts after a moment of fumbling. A word finally Hello. escapes. Hello to you. Margaret greets me as she rubs her eyes. Seems to be a do, uh, seems to be due to the trouble adjusting to not having her glasses rather than grogginess. Behind her, Lou remains on the we ground. We should eat something soon. I don't trust what is on this island, so I'll have to split my supplies with Lou. I admit, for a trip of this length, I could only manage to carry the minimum, so I don't have much to share. However, you shouldn't be the only one who gives something up. Okay, this is a different option than last time. And we got different CG scenes compared to the last time, too. Don't worry about me. I'm fine. I'm not hungry. Lou's uh, back, Lou's back is turned to it. Against us, he still ha uh, hasn't gotten up out of the dirt. You won't make it very far if you don't have something to eat. Lou bears his head deeper, deeper into his knees as he curls into a no tighter thanks. ball. I wonder when the last time he ate even was. Considering where we found him, he could have been out over Sinlos for more than a day. Yet, he has nothing with him. I'm concerned about that as well. But I know it can be difficult to force yourself to eat after something traumatic. And I'm afraid I'm not very skilled at encouraging others. There's a stinging sensation inside of me. That was not something I've ever needed to do because he was there, Margaret and I both frowned. Yeah, but Melly, since he's a hype figure character, that was sort of his thing. I just think rustling the leaves around me, the guy appears emerging from the thicket. Margaret seems to be a little uncomfortable with it at his turn. Lou doesn't notice. The guy nears us and begins to speak. The Nixie will not tread on land in daylight. However, being near the shoreline is still dangerous. If you leave the center of the island, remain cautious. Before the sun sets, I will be in this area. It would be wise to meet me here before nightfall. And just what needs to be done over in those woods that cannot be done in the brush here with the rest of us? Hmm. <laughs> and despite Margaret's pointed question, the guy considers his piece. If finished, he turns around and returns to the forest area to from which he came. Beside me, Margaret releases us out. Are you all right? No, I'm not. Nothing is all right. And it will never get any better. Lou meekly calls to me. I turn around to face him, though I don't speak. He's standing some distance away. He fidgets and glances over to the side before returning his gaze to mine. He gestures for me to come closer. I comply. He begins to whisper at me, but he fumbles with his words, and I can't ma cannot make out anything he says. I look at him inquisitively. Finally, he speaks up enough to. I'm sorry for what happened last night. He speaks quickly as he looks over my eyes, filled with sorrow. He shifts his focus downwards. Been better off without me. I agree to some extent, but sometimes you're also just a, you're a different character, and I'm sort of liking you because it's just I don't know. You're a weird fusion of characters. 
Um, I like him a little bit. Um, though, really, if we're talking characters, I am definitely want to try to get one with Bimeli and Margaret still being alive, if that's possible. Because that just, to me, is like sounds very appealing right now. It's not your fault. Yeah, if we left Lou, though, and we have Bimele, Bimele gets on the guide twice. Uh, we know what we did. Unless it's the relationship, that's the only way we can end up saving both of them. Unless it's me not having a relationship with either one. Or I have to have a specific relationship with Mele and not uh, Margaret at all, or just Margaret. And then we might be able to leave uh, with um, the three. It was closer to being my fault than anyone else's. I wasn't supposed to be here, and all I did was get in the way. The guide was right about me. I knew from the beginning that it would be like this too. I never should have stayed. Uh, finishing his thought, he sniffles and turn as he turns away. Suddenly, I feel a sorrow rip through me. Everything is falling apart, and I do not have the power to change this. We're gonna have a question here, and it's gonna be a killer one. Quietly, I speak. Oh, this is such a big one. Margaret needs a help. What happens if I say Lou? Lou stops moving, he doesn't turn to face me. I hesitate as well, also unsure of how to Would proceed. You? Be willing to speak with I'm, me. I might also go back to Margaret, by the way. I'm probably going to load it up and do Margaret again, even though I've seen Margaret scene, and I'm pretty sure it's around the same. He turns around to face me, and his eyes are brimming with tears. He smiles I slightly. Do that. I find the will to smile lightly back at him. Lou walks close to me and then pauses. After watching me for a moment, he turns his eyes to the ground, waiting for me to do something. I just stare at him, unsure. After a brief silence, I find this eye. Can I ask you a difficult question? He flinches. I don't think I'm the person you want to ask difficult questions. No one else can answer this one. It's about you. Oh. In that case, I'm really not the kind of person to give good answers. <laughs> I like that. That's a good answer. By his tone, it seems like he's trying to make a light of the situation, but to me, it's like, still sounds sad. I understand. Sad. So he's, uh, applied, despite being clearly frustrated, it doesn't look like this. Tony reopens his eyes. Looking directly you at me. Ask me anything. I'll try to answer. But I hope you have a lot of patience. You see, I smile okay. slightly. Uh -huh. So, what do you want to know? I'm gonna get a choice here, and it's gonna kill me because I'm like, I just want, I just want to say anything. Have you oh, never mind. Lost someone in the lake. This thumbs back from shock. I'm sorry for prying, but when we found you, it seemed like you were apologizing to someone that was a good way to put it and the way you've acted since makes me think that something is wrong something beyond even being out on sinlos you got a point i give him a sympathetic look where i'm even asking him to do everything you want to have and we're trying to forget what happened to us by talking about someone else's misfortune Willie well, speaks his voice is barely above a whisper i hate myself i can't do anything and so you and margaret are both the same type of character almost in that way that regard, except you're soft and way further gone than she is. She's at the breakdown stage. He's way well past that. Okay. You don't have to. And their personalities are entirely different. But I'm just saying. You about it. He smiles for her. He smiles in a self-depreciating way. I'm sorry. Lou laughs sharply at himself. I'm not worth the concern. How can you say that? What have you done that was wrong in this moment? It was only my mistake. You think that because you don't know? I do not believe you. Those eyes bore into me. I'm not upset because I lost someone out here. I'm upset because I can't bring myself to lie about it. Yeah, then you, maybe you're not supposed to lie about it. Maybe you're supposed to remember what? it. What? You gave me the perfect opportunity to cover up the pathetic truth of what actually happened. All I had to do was go along with your assumption. But when you're so direct, I can't keep my thoughts hidden. I'm too afraid of making a mistake and having the lie uncovered somehow. Because I'm an analytical fuck. Um, he stares back at the ground and says, I have to be so terrible at this. Yeah, maybe you're supposed to remember? I mean, if I killed someone, or went out here and someone died in front of me, and I couldn't get it out of my head, somewhere in me, I would be like, okay, 
There has to be some point of goddamn reason for this. Otherwise, I'm gonna go insane. So, let's try to make some, some shit come out of it. Something. Whether that be just a change of mind, personality, like not heavy change of personality, but you get what I mean. Changing shit in your life. And always remember the person, honor the person, all that shebang. So like, don't, but the middle rings through my mind and one ear to the other is where it stir all sorts of baffling jumping out emotions. Without looking up, Lou shakes his head. You shouldn't waste your sympathies on someone like me. You should have left me to die. Like a shot, my anger flares up. Together, I didn't leave you behind before, and I'm not going to do so now. The best thing you can do to help is put those kinds of thoughts in the back of your mind. Or what? I won't make it to the other side. <laughs> you gotta remember, this guy doesn't want to live. Lou laughs bitterly. His smile's almost cruel. If I thought joining you was a way to stay alive, I would have acted much differently. The only reason I came along is because I thought it might be nice to not die alone and forgotten. Thank you.